Hallelujah. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, the first name that Jesus gave to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. As the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit will lead you to the whole truth. What is the whole truth about anything? The whole truth about anything is to be understood in the context of the plan of God. Because everything happening to us is an unfolding of the plan of God. Everything happening to us. You look at a rose bud. Rose bud. Very slowly the bud opens up. First, there is one petal or half a petal, and then the whole petal, then two other petals. It is some time before all the petals are opened up. It becomes a rose flower. When we see the, ho the whole flower, all the petals opened up, only then we realize what happened before. The first stage, it was a bud, half a petal opened up. That was one stage, one stage of the full blossoming of the rose flower. Same way, everything happening to us is a stage. First stage, second stage, third stage. And we know the full meaning of it only when the whole plan is unfolded before us. Let me give you an example. We fail in our attempts. There's a problem in our life. There's a suffering in the family. But we look at the failure. We look at the problem. We look at the suffering. And we become agitated. We become angry. We become depressed. But we must be able to situate every moment in the context of the whole plan of God. The whole plan of God. Then only we understand what's the meaning of this particular failure. This failure is only one stage. But the process is going on. God's plan is opening up, is unfolding Wait and pray till the whole plan is fulfilled. My dear sisters and brothers, why is it that miracles don't happen in our life? A God is a God of miracles. And God said it. My hands are not shortened that I cannot save you. My ears are not grown dull that I cannot answer your prayer. God has said he's ready and willing to intervene miraculously. But why is it miracles don't happen? Only one reason we are not ready to be servants and handmaids of God. Who is a servant? Who is a handmaid? Two things make us servants and handmaids of God. One, to be ready to know the will of God, to listen to the will of God, to wait upon God, to know God's will. Two, to be prepared to do the will of God, waiting to know God's will and being ready and willing to do God's will. That's what makes us servants and handmaids of the Lord. And this is what we must be waiting for. What happened at Cana? Mother Mary will teach us this. Mother Mary, when a message was given to her, 
she did not understand she waited she was distressed she waited and prayed to know god's will and she was ready to do god's will here am i your handmaid let it be done to me according to your word she was ready waiting to do god's will but we we are so proud especially when we are talented everything is going well with me when everything is going well with me you and i we become so proud and arrogant we do not turn to god we do not wait upon god and no wonder miracles don't happen in our lives mother mary all through the new testament is the one person who continued to be the servant a handmaid of god and mother mary prepared everyone to be a servant of god that's what mother mary did in the upper room preparing the apostles for the anointing of the holy spirit what did she do she taught them this lesson of becoming a servant of god and the holy spirit descended upon them at cana she prepared the family to become the servant of god there was a problem a miscalculation wine jars became empty nobody knew where to turn to but the mary turned the whole family to jesus they have no wine she said to jesus she turned to jesus and then she turned the whole family to jesus do what he tells you to the whole family was prepared to do god's will and that's when the miracle happened the water was turned to wine hallelujah, hallelujah. shall all of us raise our hands and say hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 the prodigal son luke chapter 15 this young man he became so arrogant he grabbed all the money from the father i don't need the father all i need is money he grabbed all the money and he thought he was well enough i don't need the father anymore i don't need to be a servant anymore i can be my own master he wanted to be his own master i will mold my destiny i will decide where to go i will decide what to do i will decide how to live he became the master of his own destiny and he ended up where in the dirt of the big sty that's where he ended up every person who makes the mistake of becoming the master of his her life they will end up in disaster he ended up in the big sty and there the light of the holy spirit was given to him and he said to himself let me become a servant that's what he decided i will go and tell my father consider me a servant right consider me a servant and he went the father saw him from far the father came and embraced him he was in the arms of the father the one who wanted to be the servant he became a son in the arms of the father he got a ring on his finger and that means the dignity of sonship was given to him he got a mantle over his body and that means the honor of the family was given back to him he got sandals on his feet and that means the right of inheritance was restored to him everything lost in sin was given back at one moment 
when he became the servant. My dear sisters and brothers, this is what we must be. When there's a failure, when there's a failure, I met a businessman. He had a failure, a financial failure. When he had a failure, he became very arrogant. He borrowed a lot of money, a big loan. And that also was lost. That also was lost. Then somehow he lied and deceived the banks and he got more money. That also was lost. Everything was lost. He took his destiny in his own hands. My dear sisters and brothers, this mistake we also make. When there's a failure, we become arrogant. We become proud. No, I cannot fail. The fact is I failed. And that's when I need to look into my heart. Where am I making a mistake in the family life? in my relationship with my wife, with my husband, with my children. The children rebel. And that's a time the, the father and mother should sit together and pray. Where have we gone wrong? Why do the children rebel? Wait before blaming them. We need to sit in the presence of God and wait upon God. Where have I made a mistake? Where have we made a mistake? Wait for revelation. And revelation will come to us. Become servants and handmaids of God. Every failure, every disaster, every sickness should be a moment we wait and pray and reevaluate and become servants and handmaids of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. The second name that Jesus gave to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power from above. As the power from above, what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit empowers us. Empowers us. Empowers us for everything, for our family life, for our marriage, for our studies. You know, there are children and young people coming and asking me, we are not able to study. We are not able to concentrate. We are not able to get good grades. I told them, wait and pray. Every time, before you open the book, wait and pray to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the light of God. Enabling us to understand the Holy Spirit leading us to the whole truth. Enabling us to understand, wait and pray before you study. And after you read and study, Close the book, wait and pray. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of memory. Remember Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will remind you of everything. Whatever you study will be reminded to you in the class, in the exam hall. Everything will be reminded to you. And that means you are studying enabled by the Holy Spirit. Of course you have a talent, but this talent is to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. And that's when you're able to study well. Marriage, family life. Marriage is a relationship enabled by the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus spoke of marriage. Matthew chapter 19, Matthew chapter 19, from the beginning, God has created man and woman together. But God is united. Let no man put a sender. That's when the disciples asked him, Master, Moses gave us the license. 
to separate by giving a bill of divorce and jesus said that's not the will of god the will of god has always been the two become one the two become one and moses gave you that license because of your hardness of heart because of your hardness of heart moses gave you that license for the beginning it is not so and then the disciples asked a question if that is what god thinks of marriage is marriage possible a question many people ask is marriage possible well jesus answered note this jesus answered marriage is not possible for men and women marriage is not possible for men and women and angels don't marry anyway marriage is not possible for men and women but it is possible only for those who are given grace from above hallelujah said all of us raise our hands and say hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. only when grace is given the holy spirit is given to us only then will marriage become possible marriage is a relationship enabled by the holy spirit to wait upon god to accept marriage as a sacrament that is what it means enabled by the holy spirit now this power of the holy spirit luke chapter 24 49 acts chapter 1 verses 7 and 8 this power of the holy spirit has two streams two streams of powers of the holy spirit one stream the stream of the fruits of the holy spirit one stream the fruits of the holy spirit galatians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 uh, we call them the fruits which are the fruits of the holy spirit love peace joy patience kindness goodness self control faithfulness and gentleness gentleness nine fruits of the holy spirit these are called fruits why are they called fruits because these are manifestations of the presence and power of the holy spirit if there's a mango on a tree what tree is that it's a mango tree the fruits are the manifestations of the nature of the tree if these powers if these powers are there in us that means the holy spirit is there if the holy spirit is there these powers will be manifested the streams of the powers of the holy spirit love love is not a sweet sentiment as some people imagine it to be describe it to be love is a power love is a power enabling us to accept the other to commit my life to the other even to the extent of forgiving accepting the unacceptable even when the other does say something unacceptable i'm able to accept in the power of the holy spirit that's what love is love is a power joy joy is not a sweet feeling ah i eat ice cream so happy that's happiness coming from outside but joy wells up from within from the holy spirit joy is a power that enables us to rejoice even when things are going wrong with us peace is a power peace is not a sense of well being when everything goes right everything will not go right anyway all the time things are bound to go wrong even when things go wrong i'm able to feel the tranquility the tranquility of the holy spirit in my heart gentleness gentleness is a power even when the other 
the other shouts at me the other hurts me gentleness enables me to be gentle to have a smile on my face and in my heart that's what gentleness is and jesus said something beautiful when one strikes you on the right cheek what to do children what to do when someone strikes you on the right cheek children what to do? look here look here children look here look here when someone strikes you on the right cheek what to do turn to him the other cheek as well turn to him the other cheek as well and this is a power the power of gentleness i'm not angry because someone gets angry to me i don't want to react in anger i'm able to respond in the power of the holy spirit that's what gentleness is gentleness the power the power that enables me to turn to him the other cheek as well but then for this i need to wait and pray when someone strikes me when someone shouts at me there's a natural reaction to shout back but i rise above i rise above to the second moment there's a moment of the holy spirit the holy spirit to fill me with the power of gentleness that i am able to turn to him the other cheek as well i am tempted and all of us are tempted and there is a pleasure unholy pleasure holding attraction to me what do i do i need to wait and pray when i wait and pray i feel the power the power of the holy spirit the power of gentleness giving me the strength to say no to sin often we go by impulses impulses and um emotional reactions no as the first moment i wait and pray in prayer i get the strength of the holy spirit the power of self control in that power i am able to say no what jesus said jesus also was tempted but in the power of the holy spirit he was able to say no get behind me satan that power is the power of self control all the fruits of the holy spirit are powers powers that enable us to be faithful to jesus hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus the, the second stream of the powers of the holy spirit is the stream of the charismatic gifts and st paul speaks about it in first corinthians first corinthians chapter 12 First Corinthians chapter 12 the gift of prophecy the gift of preaching the gift of healing the gift of the word of knowledge these are gifts which means it is not to my credit if i am preaching well it's not my credit now i cannot take credit for that it's a gift if i am praying and someone is healed it's not to my credit no it is god's gift so all of us have these gifts all of us there are no super specialists you know when someone is sick call a super specialist in the medicine there are super specialists but not in the gifts of the holy spirit my brother my sister you are given that gift but you must exercise that gift by praying for the sick in our prayer intercessory prayer intercessory prayer must be part of our prayer our personal prayer and family prayer praying for all the sick people in the world all the sick people you know and all the sick people you do not know but god knows pray for them pray for them you would know what to do with the sick person you visit sick people what do we do when we visit sick people when i visit a sick person i must be visiting that sick person in the power and authority of the gift of the holy spirit 
So I must go and pray for that person. Some of us go and visit the sick people to crack jokes. Have you heard this? You go to a room of a sick person. A poor man is lying down. And you are two or three going there. You laugh aloud, crack jokes about, um, about uh, Trump and Obama and all sorts of jokes and political news. That man is lying down there in all anxiety. If he can raise his leg, he will kick you out of that room. Why did you go there? Only God can intervene. And your presence should give the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Lay your hand on the sick, Jesus said. Lay your hand on the sick and pray. Pray for the sick. It's not you who heal. None of us. No human being can heal. It's God who heals. But we are given the gift and the authority to pray in the name of Jesus. We must be praying. When you visit a family, what do you do? You eat and drink. Good. After that, you must be praying for that family. For every member of that family, pray that God's grace. Jesus said, when you, when you enter into any family, in the name of God, greet the peace of God. Give the peace of God in prayer. Let prayer become a way of living. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. The third name Jesus gave to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. John chapter 16, verse 7. Holy Spirit is the comforter. As the comforter, what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit fills us with heavenly joy. The comforter. And Mother Mary, as I said before, Mother Mary was very disturbed and distressed. But when the Holy Spirit came upon her, she began to rejoice. She began to rejoice. She was, she was so happy, so rejoicing. My soul rejoices in God, my Savior. She became an icon of joy. Wherever she went, her joy became contagious. Elizabeth began to rejoice. Elizabeth began to rejoice and praise God, began to sing hymn to the Lord. Even the baby in the womb of Elizabeth began to leap for joy, dance for joy. She became a cause of joy to everyone. That's what we must be becoming. There's a lot of struggle, lot of grief, lot of sorrow and despair in the hearts of people. People laugh, but they don't mean that. They're not happy. We, the disciples of Jesus, we have a right to be happy because the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, is being given to us. Joy, a very rare commodity today. And we must be able to give joy to everyone around it does not mean that everything is going well all the time. We are sick. There are problems in the family. We're struggling in finances. But in the heart of hearts, I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing because of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, verses 40 and 41. Peter and John were flogged at the pillar. You must see the Roman pillars at which they flog people. They tie you and you tied to the pillar. You stand bent and you're flogged in a very cruel manner. And they came out of the jail bruised, every cell bruised and burning with pain. But Peter and John were rejoicing. Even when the body was burning in pain, their heart was rejoicing and praising God 
for having been counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name of Jesus they were rejoicing my dear sisters and brothers let's be able to wait and pray at the moment of a failure when there is a sickness when there is a problem when there is a struggle let's be able to wait and pray and surrender our lives in the hands of god that we may become servants and handmaids of god that's a decision we make we become servants and handmaids of god to wait upon god for the holy spirit to come and fill us hallelujah, hallelujah. thank you jesus praise you jesus